Writing good melodies in electronic music can be so frustrating, especially if you're not a great keyboard player. So you either find yourself playing the same old riffs that your muscle memory defaults to on the keyboard, or you try to manually pencil in MIDI notes, which can take forever to get right. But here's the good news. There's a super easy way to come up with unique sounding, inspiring melodies, and Ableton Live does basically all the heavy lifting for you. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can turn any loop, yes, even a drum loop, into great starting point MIDI material for your lead sounds. So here is what we currently have. So I've already penciled in a lead melody here, which is just the same note here, just to show you what the synth sounds like. So I've used Ableton Drift, created a custom patch with a little bit of echo and a little bit of reverb, sounds like this. Now obviously this is not a real melody and let's say I'm super frustrated, I don't want to pencil in notes, I'm tired of playing the same old riffs on the keyboard, so what can we do? Ableton Live has this insanely cool feature that lets you turn any audio material into MIDI notes. This feature allows you to even import something like a drum loop, a percussion loop and use this as note material for your lead synths. So I'm going to show you how I personally use this in my sessions. So step one is to create a new audio track and we're gonna call this something like loops. And this is just a place where we store all the loops that we're going to transform into MIDI notes later on. Next up, we're gonna import a couple of interesting sounding loops and see what we can do with them. So here we have our three different percussion loops. I'm gonna play them for you. And something really weird. We're just gonna see what happens now when we drag them over to our lead synth. So you just grab the loop, pull it over here, and then you can choose between harmony, melody, or drums. Now, honestly, all of this is possible. There are different advantages to these things. If you want to create chords out of something, obviously you go for harmony. Melody is the obvious choice, but sometimes just using this as a drum MIDI pattern and then playing with the notes later on can be also yielding super interesting results. So in this case, I'm gonna go with melody and see what happens. Now here we have our loop, and as you can see, everything is transcribed to MIDI. Not sure what this sounds like now. Let's just play it and we'll see. Not bad. Let's test this in our session. So I'm gonna mute the percussion loops and just play this together with the rest. quite nice. It's not completely in scale, I feel, but it makes sense. So the kind of foundation of the track is in D. So let's just look at the MIDI notes, what we have here. Yeah, so a couple of them are out of the scale, but this also can be quite charming. So it's not necessarily a problem. What you can then do, of course, is you can, for example, grab some of these notes, transpose them up an octave. Then if you want to, you can bring them back to scale. So this is this D minor scale I put in here. Then also switch these up maybe. Put them a little bit higher. The cool thing is that it also uses the velocity of the original loops. So some of the notes, different velocity than others. The creative benefit here is that your brain now has something to hold on to. You don't sit in front of the blank canvas, but actually you can start curating this and playing around with it. So I personally start hearing little snippets of melodies and I want to shape this into something great. For example, I can pitch this one down to make it more interesting. Now before we move on to the second trick, let me share with you a free gift that I have for everyone who's watching this channel. It's called the Finisher Framework, my three simple steps that you can use to finish at least one great sounding song per month. This guide is completely free. It's a workflow upgrade for your creative process. You can get it at pickyourself.com framework. The link is also below this video. I hope you enjoy it. Let's now grab our second loop and throw it onto the lead channel. This time we're going to select drums. And as you can see, it transcribes the drum pattern that was there before. Let's now listen to this and just see what happens. Now we're going to do a couple of things here. We're going to select this and pitch it up an octave. Listen to what this is now. 
Now this obviously is pretty out of scale. This note is playing all the time, so I'm just gonna move that up a notch. The great thing about this drum pattern transcription is that it allows you to grab the rhythmical information very precisely. And sometimes great melodies come from great rhythms and not so much from musical complexity. So for a lead sound, I might even pitch it up one octave higher. And also I think it's a little bit too busy. So listen to this in context. But that doesn't mean that there is nothing to gain from this. So what you can do is you can focus on a specific phrase. So let's say we're just gonna stick with the first pattern here. Let's say we try out pitching up a few notes, maybe deleting a couple of other ones so it's not so busy. Not that bad. So I've now transformed this into a really nice call and response phrase. You can obviously extend this, change the second part and play around with this even more, but the original rhythm is coming from the drum loop that we had. The next and final trick that I'm about to show you is going to blow your mind, but if you got any value out of this video so far, consider subscribing to the channel, consider liking this video, this shows me that I'm on the right track with this stuff, and it also helps you because the algorithm will optimize for more goodness from producers like myself. So for this final trick to work, you actually need something that has like a little bit more tonal variety than the typical percussion or shaker loop. So I'm going to grab something that is percussive, but also has some yeah, lead element to it. So this lives somewhere in between percussion and lead sound. So we're going to use this, pull it over and transcribe it to melody. Now let's take a look at this. So super complex, not in key at all. So it doesn't sound like the original loop at all, but also this still doesn't really work in our context. But now I'm going to show you something that's going to blow your mind. Ableton Live has this insanely cool scale feature. So this is a MIDI device that you just throw at the beginning of your MIDI chain. You can dial in the fundamental notes. So in this case, it's D. And then you can basically select what types of notes you want it to play or not play. Now this is not the D major or minor scale. This is basically still, as you can see, way too many notes for just a D scale. This just means that it's starting with D. But the cool thing is that all of the different scales or a ton of different scales are already saved here and you can just throw them in. And let's say we want to have this in just normal minor. Just gonna throw this in, put it to D. Let's listen to that. Let's try out a couple of other scales. Get rid of this. Let's try out minor blue scale. Let's see how that sounds. Insanely cool. Let's try out the Phrygian mode of the D scale. And if you want to go into bleepy techno territory, by the way, I've made a video about this as well with a slightly different approach. You can go for a crazy scale like whole half diminished. We select this, put it into D and listen to that. All right, congratulations. You just unlocked a crazy simple cheat code for coming up with great melodies on the fly without any writer's block whatsoever. Now, if you enjoyed this video and you want to hear more, Leave a comment below, let me know what you would like to hear from me. Also, if you have any follow-up questions whatsoever, drop a comment below. I'm pretty active in there, and I will see you in the next video.